Hi all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ollie and I have a passion for all things sewing and an ever increasing collection of vintage sewing machines. You'll meet most of them in my videos. If this is something that interests you, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to get notified each time I upload a video. Today's video is about dating vintage Singer sewing machines. Okay, that kind of makes it sound like taking them out for a candlelit dinner. What I actually mean is working out how old they are. If you've watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I mentioned the year my machines were released. Take Grandma, for instance. She's a Singer 27 from 1912. Now, singers don't come with a sticker saying, Hey, I'm 27 and I'm 100 years old. You have to look it up, and I'm going to show you how. You'll need a couple of things. Number one, you'll need the internet. Number two, you'll need a paper, pen or pencil. And number three, Obviously you'll need your Singer sewing machine's serial number. We're going to use Grandma's and I'll show you how to find it. Now as Grandma is made out of cast iron, her serial number is actually embedded into the bed and it's literally right under your nose. It's right here at the base of the pillar. I'm just going to zoom in so that you can see it. And there you go. That's the serial number. This next bit is when you'll need your pen and paper. If you haven't got an iPad or a tablet or any kind of portable device to get onto the internet, what you're going to need to do is write down the serial number so you don't have to move the machine to where you can access the internet. Grandma's serial number starts with a G and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven digits after the letter. Now that's important. Make sure you always double check the number of digits and if that first digit is a zero, don't discount it. Make sure you include it in your number count. Mistaking a seven digit for a six digit number can not only give you an incorrect date, but it can also give you the wrong model of machine. More on that a little later. As I mentioned, vintage singers made out of cast iron, the serial number is going to be there. Other machines may have the number somewhere else, or even newer models of singers. Um, it depends on what you have, so you may have to search for that number. Once you have your serial number, you've written it down on your piece of paper, grab your preferred device for accessing the internet and let's go. The first thing to do, go to the website ismax.net, the International Sewing Machine Collectors Society. I'll put a link in the description box below. This website really is a treasure trove of information on vintage and antique sewing machines. And it's not just Singer. It covers other brands as well. It really is a fountain of information that covers more than just dating the machine. They even have an email subscription service where members and non-members can ask questions about machines and receive answers from the collector community. You can also join the society and receive a quarterly magazine giving hints on restoration as well as access to sewing machine conventions and auctions. It's well worth having a good look around this site because the amount of history and general machine knowledge the site contains is absolutely amazing. This video isn't sponsored by Ismax, I just use the site all the time and I think it's an invaluable tool for machine ID, dating and for learning the history of these lovely old ladies. Getting back to Grandma's serial number though, what we need to do next is find a link to take from the home page. From the home page, what you'll need to do is go into the menu bar going across the top of the screen, click on where it says research and that will give you a drop down menu of all the different brands of sewing machine that this site covers and the one we're interested in is right over here Singer. We're now on the Singer Sewing Machine Companies section of the website. This information used to be on the Singer website but they removed it a couple of years ago. Down the left hand side of the screen you have a number of options and different things that you can look at. You can look at advertisements, bobbins and shuttles, cabinets, but what we're interested in is this one, dating. Now let's get Grandma a nice candlelit nosh up in a fancy restaurant. No, seriously. <laughs> what we're going to do next is pick one of these options um, to take us to the next stage. Depending on which one of these options you choose, you can end up on a Singer sewing machine rabbit hole, finding out all sorts of useful bits of information about these old machines. But the one that we're interested in at the moment is the top one that says Comprehensive Singer Serial Number Charts. OK, you remember Grandma's number starts with a G. So what we're going to do is make that a bit 
bigger if it'll stay. Oops, go over a bit. Okay, is we're going to scroll down the list until we get to the one that says G. There we go, and click. And now what we have is a page that is filled with register numbers or serial numbers all allocated to the letter G. So all we have to do now is scroll down this list until we find a number that matches grandma's. You remember I said at the start to be mindful about how many digits follow that letter. As you can see, the list starts at zero and the first entries all have six digits. It's all too really it's all too easy to reach the line that starts with a one and a six because you remember grandma's serial number starts with a one and a six and think oh I found it it's a 28 from 1910 only it isn't we already know that grandma is a 27 the reason why we've misidentified grandma as a 28 instead of a 27 is because we've only allowed for six digits. If we go back to grandma's serial number, she's got seven digits. You need to be extra careful to make sure you include all the digits from that serial number. Reading these lists, these lists can be even more confusing when your number starts with a zero. It's all too easy to ignore the zero, believing it to be just a space filler, when it's actually part of the number. It's so easy to wrongly identify these machines and it's all usually down to dodgy digit reading. Let's keep scrolling down the list until we hit seven digits. Oop. Oop, a daisy. There you go. Keep going, we're still on six digits at the minute. Ah, there we go. Now we've got seven digits. Whoops. But do you know, so, notice something interesting about those seven digits? They go straight from six digits to seven digits. The six digits start with a nine and the seven digits are starting with a one. There's no zero. Well, actually there is. The thing is, you just have to keep scrolling because the digits starting with a zero are right at the end of the list. For grandma, we don't have to go quite that far. We're looking for a number 1696901. So we'll just keep down, going down the list until we find her serial number. Okay, so we're gonna scroll. We've got one zeros at the moment, one ones, one twos, all I'm doing at the minute is I'm just looking for the first couple of digits. One, three, one, four, we're getting closer. One, four, one, five, one, six. Okay, so now we go to the third number, which is a nine. So we keep going down the list until this reads one, six, nine. There we go. We've now got one six nine two. But grandma is one six nine six. So we need to keep going. But if we have a look at this row where you've got one six nine two zero zero one to one seven four two zero zero zero, that actually embraces grandma's number. So we now know that grandma's machine is from 1912 January the 8th she's from a batch of 50,000 and she's a 27. Now that we've found grandma's serial number I'm just going to keep scrolling down the list a little bit so that you can see what I mean about the zeros. So we're on one nines now and now we're into the two zeros, two ones, two twos. I'll just scroll a little faster this might make you feel a bit seasick two sevens, keep going, and now we're in the threes, actually it's making me feel a bit seasick, there's a four, and we'll keep going and going and going, this list 
he's huge. Okay, we were at eight nine. Now we're at nine zeros, nine ones, nine twos, nine five. Keep on going, keep on scrolling. Nine 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 nine. Ah, there you go. Just after the very last number nine can fit in a seven digit, we revert back to zero. And that's where you'd go to find anything that starts with a zero at the front. Now that we know that Grandma is definitely a 27 from 1912, we need to find out where she was born. And that's something else that you can do on the Ismax website. OK, from this serial number page, what you need to do is hit your back button to take you back to the Singer Sewing Machine dating page. And then what we want to click on is the serial number chart with dates. And then it's just a case of scrolling down the list until you find the letter that you're looking for, which in our case whoops, is G. And there we have it. There's G. Oop. It was issued from 1910 to 1912 on that particular um, batch of numbers. And if we go back to the top a little bit, we can see that the place she was actually born is Elizabeth Port, which is in New Jersey. I hope this has helped you to identify and date your own singing machine. The Ismax website is a fantastic resource for all vintage machine collectors, so it's well worth having a good look around and even signing up or becoming a member. Now there is an app available in the Apple Store and on Google Play called Singer Serial DB. I don't know if it's linked to the website or if it's an independent. It pretty much does the search of the serial number for you. And I'll show you how in just a sec. All you really have to do is either go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download the app onto either your phone, your tablet, your iPad, and then you just simply type in the serial number, which in this case is G169. Zero, one. And then hit done. I couldn't see it there for a minute. And then, just as we've just found out, you've got 1912, a 27, a run of 50,000, and the date was January the 8th. And I'm really sorry I can't get that to go any bigger, but it won't expand. It's a nice little app and it pretty much does the search of the serial number for you. Everything that we've just done on the Ismax website is what this app is doing in the background. It's a really handy tool to have for a quick check while you're out on the go. It only gives dates, model and number of machines though. It doesn't tell you where the machines were made and it's only for singers. You'll also need either an Apple device like an iPad or a phone or an Android phone or tablet. The app doesn't give access to all the other goodies you can get on Ismax, like details on the cabinets, what bobbin goes with which machine or any of the info on the other brands that are on the site. But now that you know how to use both the app and the Ismax website, you can pick the one that suits you or combine the two for instant singer information at your fingertips. That's all for today. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If sewing and vintage machines are your passion too, subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell to be notified when I upload another video. In the meantime, wherever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing with, embrace your creativity and have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.